guys, in this lesson, we're going to be learning about the effects of types on perfectly inelastic demand. Mostly, the questions will be asking about the effects of tax on supply and demand that looks like this, just normal supply and demand. However, they do sometimes ask you what the effects of tax will be on a perfectly inelastic or elastic demand. So we're going to be learning about this. In real life, there is no such thing as perfectly inelastic demands. Uh, we can just imagine it through theory in economics. However, for me, I was just thinking about what kind of good would be perfectly inelastic. I thought, for me, if there is a pill that would take me back to 10 years uh, with knowing everything that I know of right now, it would change my life entirely. For example, I could buy Bitcoin, like when I was a university student, and I could earn lots of money and be rich, and I could buy Apple stocks from then on, and I would be really, really rich. Knowing what's going to happen in your future would be an amazing thing. And taking me back to my youthful days would be beautiful. So if there was such a pill, I would really buy it, no matter what it would take me. So let's say that that kind of pill would be perfectly inelastic for me. I would have a perfectly inelastic demand no matter what it costs. But then the government doesn't want people to misuse that pill, so they would tax that pill. So let's say that before that pill costs like $100,000, let's say. However, the government levied $50,000 of tax. So what do you have to do when the government levies tax like that? First thing you have to do, okay, we know the equilibrium price before tax. We have to draw an imaginary supply curve that is a new supply curve that goes up by the amount of tax that. So around here, this is $50,000 amount of tax and the supply curve, an imaginary supply curve would look like this. Here, we drew an imaginary supply curve that looks like the original supply curve. Now, the, now find a new equilibrium price that is $150,000 for this pill. Now what happens, the quantity, how did the quantity change? Perhaps only five pills can be made a year. So five, no matter whether there is a price change, there would only be supplying five of them. So the quantity does not change even after the tax. What is the price consumers pay after the tax is $150,000 for the pill. What's the price suppliers receive after the excise tax? The price consumers will pay has increased by the amount of tax, like this, but then the suppliers will have to pay this much, $50,000 of tax to the government anyway, so they will still be receiving $100,000 for this pill. So the same as before. How much is total revenue before excise tax? Remember total revenue? How do you calculate total revenue? It's price times quantity. Remember price times quantity. Before tax, it was five times $100,000. So $500,000 before. How much is the total revenue after excise tax? Price times quantity. The price that suppliers receive is the same. So the answer would be still be the same. The total revenue will not change for the suppliers. The government tax revenue, however, remember, they take this much of the revenue. This is government revenue. So I will say this is government revenue. And how much, how do you calculate government revenue? $50,000 times the quantity, which is $2,500,000. That would be the government revenue. Who pays tax? Does the suppliers pay the tax? Suppliers does not pay the tax because suppliers will be just receiving the same amount of money. The consumers who has a perfectly inelastic demand, which means they're not sensitive to prices at all, they will bear all the taxes. It makes sense, right? Because they don't care about price. They're willing to pay whatever the price they charge. Consumers will pay the whole price and the government takes away the government tax revenue and they could also ask you what is the producer surplus and consumer surplus before tax and what is the producer surplus consumer surplus after tax before tax producer surplus 
Producer surplus is easy up to the price. This is producer surplus, PS before tax. And consumer surplus, what people get confused is it goes on forever and ever. So it's unlimited. This is consumer surplus before tax. So what happens to the producer surplus and consumer surplus after the tax is that producer surplus doesn't change because for the producers, they haven't changed anything. The price hasn't changed. So producer surplus would still be the same as before. What about consumer surplus? Consumers will be having infinite amount of, of consumer surplus because they're willing to pay any price anyway. So consumer surplus would start just here and then it would go on forever. It's open. It's still unlimited. This is consumer surplus. However, remember before tax, it started from here, but now after tax, the consumer surplus will start from here, from $115,000. So remember this and now we know what it is like to levy tax on perfectly inelastic demand. I hope you understand. It's not that hard, right? So hope you understand. If you found this video helpful, please like this video. And if you have time, please subscribe to my channel. It will be such a great encouragement for me. So thank you guys for watching and hope you have a nice day. I hope you get a five on AP as well. <laughs>